Let's move on to our last player of the day, Antonio Gibson, who right now has a DLF startup ADP of RB17. We know about Gibson, converted college wide receiver, who then came into the NFL as a two-down grinder running back, which we didn't quite expect, but he's been fairly successful in doing so. He's in PPR, has been the RB13 as a rookie, and then last year was the RB10. But somehow there seems to be some disappointment there with what he's done. I think that's because people thought he was going to have this really high target share. And we know targets are worth more than carries. But he's still producing despite that. So I don't know why there's this disappointment happening. Then we got J.D. McKissick being brought back. And then that was a little bit of a knock. Brian Robinson gets drafted. Another little bit of a knock. I like to think that Brian Robinson was, has less to do with... Uh, they're not happy with Antonio Gibson, but more... This is to make sure they have more depth behind him and so that this is a possible succession plan after Antonio Gibson. At this price, I'm interested in getting some shares. Mace, what do you think? I couldn't help but agree. With, I'm like, yes, dude. At, um, what do you say, RB17 or 19? Either way, up 17. there. <laughs> yeah, that's that's yeah, that's ridiculous. Um, I think people are starting are kind of getting afraid because he had 11 touchdowns, two fumbles in 2020. Uh, 21 comes around. You got that regression. He's got seven touchdowns, six fumbles. So that's not really helping out. Um, when I was looking him up, I went back and just looked at his uh, draft profile for just to see what was up. And people were comparing him to Denard Robinson. I just thought that was <laughs> crazy just because he had such a small sample size. But um, he was tied for eighth with Zeke in 10 plus rushes last year with 24. So if you <clears throat> look at that, that's not too bad. Um, he was the worst graded in the fumble category for PFF. I don't know if I can legally say what that is, but looking that up as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I don't, he only had four drops last year and he was targeted two more times than JD McKissick last year, but he had a hundred less yards. So I, I don't know. He can do it all. He's an athlete. He's, a, he actually is a better runner than I thought he was going to be primarily zone run. Uh, like I said, he can do it all. So yeah, I'm, I'm all in on it right now. hundred percent of my life. Another thing, I think people forget that he was dealing with that shin injury basically all season and just played through it. And we thought like he was going to sit out for a few weeks and then he was just like, nah, I'm good. And just kept playing. Well, his quarterbacks too, though, like his quarterback play, I mean, Wentz isn't amazing, but it has gotten a (laughs) little bit better. So I I, I think it is better. So that'll that'll help. Yeah. Taylor Heineke, you know, fine quarterback, but he is limited as a quarterback because he doesn't have the arm to really push the ball down the field. And that limits what the offense can do. And it makes the, so the defense can kind of just crowd up on the line. Exactly. Skylar, what do we think? Well, Taylor Heineke wasn't even the plan last year. We'll forget that Ryan Fitzpatrick <laughs> right. was coming into we town and everyone, everyone, everyone was, everyone was compl- really excited about this team. And the, the process was there where it was like, if this team, which two years ago was one of the best defensive teams emerging in the NFL. If they have a consistent defense, they finally bring in a veteran who can stabilize the offense that could be more competitive in games so be scoring more points. This guy, Antonio Gibson, who flourishes in the red zone, is going to see plenty of touches for that could lead to touchdowns. He's going to be force-fed carries, and any receiving gets on top of that is going to be a bonus. And now everything in that process went completely wrong. Ryan Fitzpatrick got hurt. They had very lackluster quarterback play, inconsistent to say the least. The defense absolutely fell apart. It was one of the worst defenses in the league last year. And Antonio Gibson was dealing with a lot of nagging injuries. So everything in the process was not there for Gibson to jump into that top five like we thought one of these years. It's coming for Gibson. And he still finishes the, uh, the running back 12. He was still an RB1. And his rookie year, I missed a couple games at the end of the season. He was RB thirteen. It's this 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 player, even with Jaden McKissick being there and catching passes, and the team being average at best, um, he could very easily just be a fringe running back one. I think it's all about just tampering your expectations with Antonio Gibson. It's coming off, you know, the high stand that Antonio Gibson has this top five upside because. He probably doesn't. He probably doesn't at this point. You just have to accept him for who he is. And, you know, they bring back J.D. McKissick. Um, you know, the team's trying again. I think they learned from last year, right? They they brought in a guy they have a little more confidence in than Ryan Fitzpatrick, that being Carson Wentz. They, they saw that he had some injuries and, you know, 
Jarrett Patterson was their first dart throw at a successor to thing. He's just not really built the same way. Um, you know, they bring in Brian Robinson as a guy who can come in and give some relief. If Gibson gets hurt, you won't be totally screwed because he's a big body. You can catch catch some passes if you need them, do a little bit of everything. Um, and if Brian Robinson doesn't impress, I wouldn't be surprised if they take a round three or four running back again next year and the year after, because that's just the smart thing to do in the NFL, right? You don't take a running back when you need one. You start to take a couple darts, cheat dart throws when you already have a guy that you like just in case, because it's a position that turns over very, very quickly. Um, him falling to, you know, running back 17 and DLF ADP 19 on, on KTC it's again, it's just this is the point in the offseason where all these overreactions completely change the market. And players with proven production are going at insane values. And Antonio Gibson going is a near end, nearly an RB3 is is wild to me. You could think about that as he's like, that's like the fifth round of your startups. <laughs> um, so just coming in, we named other players, you know, like when we said Chris Gowan, there's guys. Every offseason, you know, it points like Deontay Johnson and other offseasons, like these players who just have almost guaranteed work. They just completely slip because we get excited about the Rashad Batemans. We get super excited about some of these rookies coming in. And this tier of running backs, once we get past the proven stud RB1s, it's like running back like 11 to 20. There's like eight or nine guys in every single per player in that tier except – uh, Derrick Henry is is young and has flags of their own, right? We're talking, we're talking uh, in no particular order, like your Cam Akers, your Travis Etienne's, your Dave Montgomery's, Elijah Mitchell, J.K. Dobbins, you know Kenneth Walker. Like these are the players that he's in the same tier with, and you Gibson could argue, easy. you could argue some red flags for any single one of those guys, right? So if you can trade um, to acquire. Antonio Gibson using any of those guys to get something on top of it. You're, I don't think personally you're ruining your chances of having that fringe RB one type season who, if McKissick were to get hurt or he were to stay healthy, a little uh, touchdown variance could end up as a middling RB one, you know, on his day or on his season. Uh, I think that's, that's definitely the play. Right. And if, because just given where he's going, I, I wouldn't be trading down a tier to like the Dylan Connor Fournette tier because I don't think you're going to get proper uh, proper value back on top of that. I don't think you're getting one of those guys in a first round or back anymore. You might barely be able to get a first for, for Gibson to begin with. And everyone knows you're coming in and you're panicking because they saw Brian Robinson get drafted. They saw the reaction when McKissick came back after being a bill for about an hour. Um, so <laughs> no, one's, no one's paying up. No one's giving you what you could have gotten for him last season, which was earlier last season was probably two firsts worth of value. The end of the season was a first and a second every time. Now you're maybe getting a first. You're just holding on to him, right? If he's your RB1, uh, yeah, I'm probably a little worried, but it's just not the time to sell. If he's your RB3, I wouldn't be selling him just to sell him. Just hold him. And when somebody inevitably needs a running back, he could end up being a top-end RB2 on your team and you sell – one of the other two RBs, or you move Gibson if he ends up having a crazy start to the season. So, sorry, I went on a little bit long there. But <laughs> I just you can tell Skyler's passionate about Antonio Gibson. I, I, <laughs> I, he's, I've put down my arms that he's going to be this top five RB that we thought he potentially could be elevated to in the past, but seeing him go as nearly an RB three is absurd because. If he's healthy for at least 12 or 13 games, he probably finishes better than RB15. Yeah, right Right now where he's being valued according to this ADP, you know, you can possibly get it done for like a late first round pick in rookie drafts right now. And then you're when you do when you think about it that way, you're like saying, okay, like Christian Watson or Antonio Gibson. And like that decision Come is on. so easy for me. It's not even close. Sky you know, Moore? it's like, it's on. like James Cook or Antonio Gibson because James Cook's going up there now. That that decision is so easy, you know. You take the talent over the unproven. Real quick, one or sorry, two more stats. Yeah, and Gibson was fifth in attempts with two fifty eight. He was hundred away from the first place guy, and then he had sixty five first down runs. So if you get a point for first down in your league, you need to slam this guy. Yeah, that's one of the things that I wasn't expecting that Antonio Gibson, but it's come true is that he's a trusted short yardage and goal line back in that offense. He's built for it. It's it's 
it's not very common. It's a completely different position. You know, the, the underneath routes as a wide receiver to playing running back. People think he caught passes. Now he's a running back. That must mean he's going to catch passes in third down. Pass protection is one of the most difficult things to do out there yeah. at the position. And you don't just learn that in a year, right? I think that's one of the things we also didn't give him enough time in his development when we project him to take a leap is mm -hmm. he's got – and he didn't get, f you know, three, four years to learn – how to do pass from college to come in where he can fine tune for two seasons and then be that guy. He, he didn't do it at all. And coming exactly. in and the, the routes you're running are also very different because sometimes you go in a block, sometimes you slip, sometimes you go in the flat. These are not the same routes you run as a slot wide receiver. You know, it can be a plus that you have those hand skills, those ball skills, but just assuming the routes are the same or you'll be able to pass block just because you're a receiver is it's that's that's a little uh, a little ignorant. Right? It's just a really hard adjustment to make. It can be a plus knowing he can catch passes. That does not necessarily mean he will. And he caught plenty I, actually at the yeah, end of the yeah, day too. Yeah. It wasn't even. It just wasn't Christian McCaffrey level. You know, a thousand yards receiving. I, I think we could go on about Antonio Gibson for a long time, but we got to wrap it at some point. So I think that time is now.